Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to learn how to mount a Linux disk image in Windows. Well, kind of. We're actually going to be using the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL, to help us out with this. I'm hoping this episode will help out a lot of people because this is a topic that I often see discussed online. There tends to be a lot of confusion about how to do this, but the good news is it's relatively straightforward and usually pretty easy. On my desktop, you'll notice I have a file called testimage.dd. This is a 100 gig raw Linux disk image with an ext4 file system. So this is the image that we'll be mounting within WSL. To get started, let's switch over to Windows Terminal and notice that I'm already in my user's desktop directory. So this is where that image is located. We're going to be using the fdisk command to get some basic information that we'll need to be able to mount this disk image. Now, there are other ways to obtain the information, but again, in this example, we're going to be using fdisk. In Ubuntu, if you do not have fdisk installed, you can install it by using the command sudo apt install fdisk. Now, in my case, you'll notice that it says it's already installed and at the newest version, so we should be good to go here. Now, let's go ahead and run fdisk with the dash L parameter, and we're going to specify our disk image, which is testimage.dd. This is going to list some basic information about this image. Now notice that we get back three different devices that are listed here. So under device, you'll notice that we have a BIOS boot device, an EFI system device, and a Linux file system device. And as you may have already guessed, it's the third device that contains the data that we're after. This is the Linux file system. So it's this specific device and this specific partition that we want to mount from within this image. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a mount point, which is basically just an empty directory that will serve as a placeholder until we actually mount the image in that location. Once we've mounted the image, we'll just change into that directory to be able to access the contents of that mounted disk image. So what I'm going to do is use sudo mkdir slash mount slash image. So I'm creating an image directory within slash mnt or slash mount. And as you can see, that step has been completed. The next thing we need to do is use the mount command, but I'm actually going to do this in steps. I'm going to use this incorrectly at first so that you can see some common errors and mistakes that people may make along the way, and then I'll show you the solution. So we'll type sudo mount dash O to specify some options. And the first option that we'll need is RO for read only. This is obviously going to be very important because we don't want to inadvertently change anything in our disk image. Well, at least usually that's the case. We want to make sure that everything remains read only, hence the RO. The next option we need to specify is loop. This is necessary because the thing that we are mounting is a disk image and not a physical drive. There's a concept of a loopback device that is necessary to mount a disk image. So that's why we need loop. Now there are two additional options that we'll need, but as I said, I'm going to leave those off for now to show you what happens. The next thing we'll specify is the disk image itself. And then lastly, the mount point that we just created, which will be slash mount slash image. Now check this out. Notice we get an error that says wrong FS or file system type, bad option, bad super block, missing code page or helper program or other error. So that narrows it down, right? Okay, so what are we doing wrong here? Well, for one thing, we need to specify the offset for this particular device this third device, which is again, the Linux file system partition that we're trying to mount. So how do we do that? Well, you may have guessed that it has something to do with these numbers that you see here. Notice that we have a start, end, and sectors column. And under start, we have this value right here. This, however, is not what we need, not quite what we need anyway. Let's go ahead and right click to copy this to the clipboard because this value is going to be important but what we need to do is actually multiply this value by the sector size. The sector size is 512 bytes. So we need to multiply this by 512. So let's bring up a calculator. We'll paste in that value and multiply it by 512. And that number is going to serve as our offset. That's what we need to specify with the mount command. So let's press control C to copy that to the clipboard. And now if we repeat the mount command, what we're going to do is tack on another option called offset equals, and we'll paste in that value. And this is going to get us almost all the way there. So check this out. 
Now notice that we get another error that says cannot mount dev loop zero read only. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, there's one final option that you would typically use here, and that's called no load, which is going to instruct mount not to load any of the file system journals. Now, if you don't know what a file system journal is with respect to ext3 and ext4 file systems, well, it sounds like you may need to check out the new 13 cubed training course, Investigating Linux Devices. By the time you're watching this, the course will either be in waitlist or publicly available. So check out Investigating Linux Devices at training.13cubed.com. This is a very comprehensive, beginner-friendly Linux forensics training course that will cover everything you need to know to be able to investigate Linux devices. By the time you complete the course, you'll have at least an intermediate level of knowledge with Linux forensics. So check it out today at training.13cubed.com. Okay, so after adding the no-load option, check this out. We should get back nothing. And as you can see, that's exactly what's happened. We get back a blank line, which is a good sign. At this point, we can change into our mount point of mount image. And now if we do a directory listing, notice that we do see some files here. And this is indeed the root of our mounted Linux file system. So we have successfully been able to mount it. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Let me bring back up that last mount command one more time. And of course, all of this will be listed in the video's description as well to help you out. So you don't have to try to copy this from the screen, but this in general will usually get you most of the way there. Obviously the offset is going to vary, but this command should be very close to what you're going to need to be able to mount a Linux disk image from within WSL. So I hope this helps you out. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.